here we go. I'm gonna tell us we're live. And then I'm gonna wait till I hear myself in stereo. So I can <laughs> click that through. Hello, there we are. Welcome at Midwest Elevation. Welcome, welcome. Are you out there? Let us know. We are back with another Tuesday conversation to raise the collective consciousness. I am your host, Renee Zukin, an educator, writer, and uh, lover of all things, people, beings, you know, just just whatever. It's a, a great Tuesday to be here. Let me double check that we are here, in fact, live. Yes, there we are. Yay, I'm so excited. If you are joining us, please let us know whether you are watching live or on the replay. I am so excited for this conversation today, talking about being a divine human. What does that mean? Uh, is it an oxymoron? I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but Nicole is here with us today, Nicole Thibodeau, and I'm so excited to talk to her. She is an oracle of divine transmissions as a channeler and mentor, she works with spiritually evolving gentle souls blossoming into their healing gifts and on their spiritual path so that they can have more clarity and be in liberty to live their divinity. But what she is most passionate about is assisting gentle souls in embracing their power and becoming the master of their own lives. She offers her own programs, Unveil Your Inner Gifts and Embrace Your Divine Power, as well as soul healing sessions and channelings for groups. She uses light language and toning, also creates codes, which are images infused with high frequencies to assist her clients to activate energies in a remarkably simple, gentle, and yet powerful way. She is the co-author of the best-selling book, Evolutionary Healer, and is in the process of editing her own book, Back to Love Again. She has worked with clients from all around the world, channeled for groups in her community and internationally. She lives in Canada, and you can connect with her through Facebook, Instagram, all those good things. Welcome, Nicole. I am so excited to be talking with you today. So am I, and thank you for having me. You're so welcome. So welcome. Um, I was kind of joking, you know, divine human as an oxymoron, right? It, it's almost like it feels like two opposing forces, but... But what does it really mean to be a divine human in this life? Well, it's just finding this balance between your divinity and your humanity. It's, mm -hmm. For me, it's not something that you can dissociate. We are divine beings that chose to come and live a human experience. Mm -hmm. So if we deny our human side, that might mean that we are meant to come back to experience that. And... <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> right. We have to do this multiple times, right? No. So let's experience it. And at the same time, what happens when you are in balance in those two energies, it's your divine self, your divine energies will bring the support to your human human side. Mm. And the human side is there for you to, you know, notice different things and to be able to experience them and really anchor them. Mm. but it's not only the bad things it's also the good things right right we, sometimes we think being human is always a bad thing but it's not it's no um, there's many glorious beautiful things about being human <laughs> exactly so we're here to celebrate that at the same time mm. I love that I love that you also you know you speak to how you know those different pieces or parts of ourselves that you know, encompass the divinity and the humanity right here on earth in this physical plane. Um, the balance that we have to really, um, that, that we're supposed to like use it together and be in it together to, you know, provide that support and that, that, I don't know, for me, you know, there's a, there's a faith involved there too, but the love that, that is able to get you through the hard parts of being human. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you see, the thing is, is that for me, our divinity is not something outside of me. Mm. It's something that's within us. It's all within us. We just need to go within and connect to it and give ourselves ex the permission 
yeah. to express that in our life. Mm. Mm. I love so, that. You know, sometimes it can be scary. I was scared at times when I was opening up to myself and, you know, different emotions came because I wasn't brought up, especially not through religion, to think that I was divine. Right. And it was just, who do you think you are? Yeah. Well, I am the divine being that chose to become a human. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love that. Well, and it's true that these are not uh, often the messages that we get through organized religions of of many kinds. You know, God is this other being out there, um, you know, kind of seen as separate. And that's not true, you know, across the board, but... Um, you know, depending, you know, I know I've talked to a lot of people who've had a similar experience. Um, you know, I'm certainly no expert. <laughs> um, but just in my conversations with others, that that feeling of of separateness or that like, you know, you can't say that you're divine or you're part of God, God, you know, that like, uh, but it's but it's true, especially if, you know, we have a belief that <laughs> God is everywhere and in all things that that includes us. That exactly. Includes us. We're not left out of the equation. No, and we tend to forget about that. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, uh, if, if God is um, omnipresent, I mean, this is what it means. And for my belief is we are all parcels of God. Mm. And we just came to experience this individuality at the same time and this is where many times it's difficult to find this balance between being human and being divine at the same time because you've got this human mind that says i am my own master <laughs> <laughs> and then you know it's i sometimes i have conversations with myself i have to admit just yeah. telling my my mind saying okay now you take the space that is for you and we allow the heart to open mm. and that was an exercise i had to do a lot when i started channeling was to give the space for the heart to open to receive the messages and i used to work in accounting so everything was <laughs> i love that so. <laughs> well and and it's true and i think and you spoke to it previously too that it can feel kind of scary because and especially because of that mind you know and the ego part of ourselves that is you know designed to protect us from anything unknown or unusual or scary um so that it can it block some of that open-heartedness and some of that flow um i'm so curious about your channeling i just i think it's amazing and i've I've seen, um, you know, I've been a part of your Facebook group where you've channeled in there before, and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful to listen to and to to hear the messages that come through. Um, and I know a little bit about it uh, and I've seen some other channelers, but um, I, yeah, if you want to speak a little bit to that, that process for you and, and what it's, what it's meant for you to, to be a channel. It was... It was hard in the beginning because my ego was very strong. So I had to give a lot of love to my ego for it to surrender to this process. And, you know, the childhood and all the heartaches that I experienced when I was young. Of course, I was always highly intuitive, but I was aware about of it. But I was also scared about it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I had premonitions. And it's through Reiki that I started channeling. Mm. And that process brought me because I could, I had the feel, the sensation, or I thought I had control because I had a technique to use. Yeah. Yes. And it wasn't just like anything happens and anything goes. Right. So I felt secure in that. Mm. So I respected myself enough to allow that to happen. And when I started channeling, it's conscious trance. So, you know, you're, you're conscious still when you're channeling. And 
I used to tell my mind and my my ego and say, okay, now you can sit and watch, but you have to be quiet. You're, you're, I'm giving you a vacation right now for the next yeah. hour. <laughs> and, and that helped me to continue on and open up, open up. And, you know, I received a lot of healings and a lot of support from, you know, my, I call them my divine team, because sometimes it can be ascended masters, archangels that are there assisting and even though they change at times, because it depends on the path that you're on and, you know, any decisions that you make. And actually, this brings me to this morning uh, meditation was opening the heart to new possibilities. Mm. And I had to surrender. And this became a message that was constant almost every month that I received is open your heart open your heart so I said oh my god I'm gonna go into mastery of opening the heart is just like what is it I'm not getting but it's until I understood that it meant the expansion of my heart it's not my heart is not open Mm. but it's giving space and giving myself permission so this is something that I tell everybody give yourself permission to open your heart and yes in the beginning we feel vulnerable because we're used to protecting ourselves Mm -hmm. and when we connect with our divine presence we realize that our divine presence would never hurt ourselves you know so we are very well protected Mm. and we're just like a little child learning to walk yeah i mean you you begin with small steps actually as a child will start by you know, strengthening their legs to stand up. Mm -hmm. So we we tend to want everything perfect right away. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) When in reality, it's a process. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a huge process. Just like learning to walk. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. little by little. Um, I'm just, I'm feeling really emotional right now hearing you tell this, these these pieces, um, because it is vulnerable, and it is scary. But the, um, you know, the idea that it's not that our hearts haven't been open, or that we're not, you know, able, but that expansion in the space um, feels really meaningful. um, And the allowance to surrender to that, and to believe in the safety of that. is huge, <laughs> you know, especially I think for, for people who have gone through, um, you know, any, any sort of trauma or, you know, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, trauma with a capital T, um, but, uh, but being able to get to a point where you can surrender and trust in that process. Um, and I love that it was Reiki that <laughs> gave you that structure. I I just finished my Reiki too. Uh, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, just a couple months ago. So I feel like I'm still. I mean, I know I, I I'm always learning. There's always lots and lots to learn. Um, but I think providing that structure can help a lot of people. And you know, as a mentor, that's what you are doing to help your clients you know, who are coming to you in this space, you know, I feel like, um, you know, I have this sense that I've been intuitive, and I've gotten, you know, some training with Reiki, and I've done some other sort of, you know, energy healing um, work. But to have that structure and that guidance that you provide your clients, um, you know, I think is, it's really amazing work that you're doing, and it allows you know, your clients to expand. And of course, you know, when each of us individually are doing this work, you know, that's what I say when we have these conversations every week, right? We're doing the inner work to see the outer change and it has that ripple effect. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And my clients, when I work with them, they always come because they have blockages and there's something there. They sometimes they can't even express exactly what it is. Yeah. But they don't want that in their life anymore. They just want to open up and feel free. 
so that's you know through those programs that I you know it's, it's all one-on-one so we I can adapt to each one and when we do a private session and every time we do the calls we end up having some some sessions sometimes in the calls because it's what's there and it's raw and yeah. you know you can't leave the person hanging there with that <laughs> so we we discuss about all that and uh, no it's it's amazing how how these people in just a few lessons they they start opening up and they they feel the change in their life and they feel um right now i have mostly people in embrace your divine power and within this the second month they already notice that they're not in reaction to certain things as they used to because they are liberating all the thought forms the patterns of, I've, of you know what doesn't belong to them this is the first month this is what we work with mm. and it helps them I can give an example of when I started working with that. It was the first the first code, which is for the Earth Star chakra underneath the feet, and I was freeing and liberating myself from all the thought forms patterns that did not belong to me. And that code is especially you know when you were born, you're bo- you just grab this package deal. <laughs> And it, you know, it's maybe from your parents, grandparents, whoever around could be from the community. And when I worked with that code the first time, what happened at some point was I had this thought about something, and then I would just stop and say, "Wow, that that's not me. Mm. That was my dad thinking that way. That doesn't belong to me." Okay, note it. Yeah. <laughs> we can release that and you know it's all things like that it it begins to to change and we go deeper and deeper and in embrace um sorry unveil your inner gifts well it's for people that are not at ease with their their own intuitive nature or you know Mm -hmm. some have experienced certain things and they got scared i was really scared to open up because I didn't understand any of that. Yeah. And at home, now I know my father was a medium, but he was always talked about being a man who was doing black magic. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up fearing my father, thinking that if he can do black magic, imagine if I do something wrong, what he can do to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And how mean is that? To me, it was really mean to be doing black magic. It meant the worst thing. So growing up, I had premonitions. And the one that made me close down completely is that I I felt the death of my best friend's baby. He was a month old. He had the crib death. So I woke up choking, unable to breathe and just tapping on my chest trying to breathe and just like in a panic wondering what is going on yeah yeah and then the phone rang a little later and I just ran out of the room and I told my mother my friend's baby is dead the baby's dead the baby's dead and like it was like a broken record it's just it wouldn't stop and then she nodded and then I said okay I went back into my room and I cried because I just didn't know what to make out of that right then I I told Gary that yeah I told God, I said, forget it. If I'm going to see only those bad things happening, I'm out. It's just like, I don't want this. It's just like, so I completely repressed it. And what happened is then I started feeling a little more depressed because actually what was going on is I was denying a big part of me. Mm. And it's many years later after I had a premonition, you know, even though I repressed it, it didn't mean that it would stop. Sure. Had a premonition, my husband would have an accident in the car. And we were following each other. And when I got my mom's house, and he wasn't, he was half an hour late, and he was supposed to be just behind me. You can imagine the panic I was in. Yeah. So only the mirrors hit. So nothing worse happened. But it happened just the same. Right. And then, then I, it's just like, forget it. It's just, I worked so hard to close that down. 
And one day it's my father that told me, you can't deny that it is part of you. The thing is, you don't have to do anything with it, but you have to accept it is part of you. Mm. Of course, coming from the experiences he's had, and even his father, because he gave me stories of his father (laughs) talking to somebody that was invisible, and he was just nine years old, my dad at that point. Yeah. And so, you know, he knew all about this and it was carried down, but he had the belief that it was only your oldest child that you could transmit those (laughs) gifts to. (laughs) So it was only in his late years, you know, a few years before he passed that he found out what I was doing. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we started connecting even more about that. Unfortunately, because I was so fearful of all this, we never had the chance to talk deeply about it. So there is a safe environment we can create for ourselves. Mm. And this is by connecting to your divine energy, your divine self, and allowing your divine self to bring you the support that you need in those moments. So that's what Unveil Your Inner Gifts came about. I, it was a download that I received to help people, you know, to, uh, learning. Um, it's like in three chapters, um, if I can say it that way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, first, the first module is more about meditations, but trying to find the best meditation for, for each, because I'm not the type of person that could meditate for half an hour. Yeah. Even if people <laughs> told me, get up earlier, Get up earlier. I already wake up at five in the morning. Oh my goodness. Get up at 4 30. I'm gonna sleep it. Sorry, yeah. that doesn't work. So yeah. I had to find different ways. And during the day, I was always talking mm. to the angels, my guides, and always uh, you know, aware that they were there. They for me, since I'm a little girl, they've always been beside me, my friends. Yeah. And then I started doing that while I was peeling my potatoes, mm-hmm. talking to them because, you know, when you're peeling your potatoes, there's no kid that's going to come around and ask you anything right. in case Somebody they come wants to help in the kitchen. That's right. <laughs> so that was the best moment for me. And, you know, I've, I've tried so many things. Mm. So that's why I tell people, you know, when you do this, Um, you start learning meditation you have to find what works best for you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's your divine presence your divine self that's going to come and support you and help you to find what is the best for you Mm. that's beautiful yeah I think that's probably one of the reasons that I like doing the dishes as much as I do them I don't always like it but it does have that meditative quality to it where, you know, the busyness of my brain can be busy doing this. And the, you know, it, it's like you said, you can set, set those parts aside that don't need to, uh, you know, that need to take a back seat for now. Oh, we do have a question. I love this. So Dirk Keller is here. Hey, Dirk, how's it going? Um, how do we connect to our divine being? What a great question. How do we know, like, right, that that's what we're doing? What's the? (laughs) Well, it's through your heart. Mm. You know, it's important to do the anchoring of your heart flame and anchor it to the earth. And that is very, very important because you want to be well anchored when you work with higher frequencies. As you will connect to your divine presence, your divine self, you go deeper within your heart, but you're going higher in frequency. So it's important for you to be very well grounded and be patient. Sometimes you might receive a message. Some might receive a message right away, but others, it might take a few times and you will find that sweet spot in your heart where you can sit And everything becomes easy. Everything becomes peaceful. And it's in those moments that you can bring that, you feel it within you, 
and you bring that back into your reality. Yeah, I, I love that for me. And I think, um, a lot of people like to do things in nature because it helps you immediately sort of ground. Right. So even, you know, I do walking meditation too. I don't call it a, I'm going to go do a walking meditation, but when I'm outside in nature, it just, it slows everything down. Um, and you know, that, that point at which the busy mind is quiet, like you said, there's a peace, there's an ease and like, that's it where you can just look around and like, <laughs> like nothing, nothing can, you know, nothing else matters. Nothing can like ruffle you in that moment. Um, and even if you go for that walk in nature and your mind is very busy, then this is when you stop and take a few deep breaths to go within and give yourself permission to be in that moment. And sometimes when I do the anchoring with people, I just suggest to them to imagine they have a backpack next to them and they put all their worries, everything you're thinking about, and you put it all in that backpack and you can take that backpack after. Everything's going to be there. Yeah. So it's just emptying your mind and just allowing yourself to be in that moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. What great imagery. What great imagery. Yeah, craving that peaceful, easy feeling for sure. Um, my walking meditations, um, silent. No, not necessarily. Uh, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I'll listen to music. Sometimes I'll listen to a podcast. Um, and which case, you know, my mind is, it's not necessarily meditative, but the music, um, if I'm doing more meditative, I'll listen to music that doesn't have words. Um, and that helps me stay centered um, as well. But, you know, like you said, Nicole, it's finding what works for you. What is it, where, where in your life can you find those moments of peace? What are you doing? What's, you know, what are your surroundings? What are, how are you? I was going to say, how are you breathing? <laughs> but <laughs> It can be that. It can be through your breath. I mean, if there's, I mean, a lot of people do the, uh, the breathing in yoga. And it's very important. The in-breath and the out-breath is as important. So if it's something that helps you to come back into center, I used to do that when I worked. I mean, I used to hide in the bathroom and just lock the door and just sit there. Yep. And just, I used to call this, I'm going for a breather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just breathe three, four times just to have the time for myself to come back to my center, come back to my heart. And just let go of everything that was going on. Because sometimes when you are 14 people working all together, it's very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And as an empath, well, you kind of catch on everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh, for sure. So. It is. Well, and I want to say too, uh, you know, and Dirk, I don't know if this is true for you or anybody else who is with us today or watching um i used to think that it was going to be some like big aha like moment okay this is the divine this like you know fireworks i don't know what i had this this idea that it was going to be this big thing um and the truth is it is a big thing but it doesn't feel like you know pomp and circumstance it, you know, it feels like that, it feels like surrendering, you know, for me, and I don't know, you know, maybe if this is true for you too, but, and it feels like gratitude when I am in like full gratitude of the moment and the people around me and all, you know, and just being here and as much in the moment as possible, like to me, that's it. Yeah, and it, that's the way the you just described mindfulness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> 
but everybody has their own way. And these, these ways that we find for ourselves, they can change over time, Mm -hmm. you know, and we evolve and we continue living on and um, having different experiences and what has worked in the past. If it doesn't work now, it's okay. Just find something new for you that, that will it be more aligned with who you are now. Mm-hmm. I love that. Beautiful message. Beautiful. Um, yes. Uh, four count breathing. It's a beautiful thing, Dirk. It is. And any way you can, you know, there, and there's all the science behind that too, right? How our, how our breath, um, you know, lowers the, um, Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on our nervous system. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, and all that. And that just gets you to that starting point. And the imagination. So I do, I'm, we're, we're just about out of time, but I do want to mention too, because the imagery that you had mentioned earlier and that you use, you know, with the groundedness, uh, with the backpack, right? Our imagination isn't just there for play and pretend it it can also you know creativity is an avenue of the divine and um and i just you know i don't i don't want people to forget that or think oh i'm just imagining it because even if you are imagining things what you're imagining is allowing for the space and the experience of groundedness or of letting go or of releasing, you know, that's the same reason we have ritual because it gives us the structure and the space and the picture to work with, to work with those energies. So, um, yeah, I don't know. (laughs) That just sort of came out. (laughs) Oh, channeling, aren't you? (laughs) I might have it in me a little bit and I might be afraid, but we'll see. We'll see what comes through. Well, many times for me, it's um, if I have time just to give that little anecdote. Yes. As a friend of mine, she's a medium and she, she's been channeling for years. And one day she kept telling me, you know, you're a channel. And I laughed in her face and I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yes, you are. So we argued for about 10 minutes on the phone. And in the end, I said, are you telling me everybody's aware I'm a channel and I'm the only one who's not? <laughs> And she said, yes, <laughs> oh, I had to learn on accepting that, but it is these little moments when words come out like they just did, it's you're connected to your divine self and that energy, that frequency can come through your heart mm. and be expressed and you give messages. And sometimes a lot of people will recognize that, that I don't know why I said that to this person. And then suddenly this person says, you know, when you said that, it really hit home. Yeah. It's not something that you tried to do. It just happened. (laughs) Yes. Because you were open to it. You were allowing the flow of that energy to be there. Mm -hmm. And notice that every time in those moments, you are fully in your heart and you're feeling the love for that person. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's truly it. Mm. Gorgeous stuff. So I'll be keeping editing my book. Yes. I'm so excited. When is, uh, do you have a, a, a launch date or a plan, publishing plan, whatever, whatever it's called? Well, I had a launch date, but then there was selling the house and moving that came right. along. <laughs> put a little wrench in your plans yeah so hopefully it can be before the end of this year (laughs) that would be great well i'm so excited i so excited um yes so please uh get in contact with nicole if you are wondering if you too might be a channel or any other divine gifts that you carry and you would love some support um and uh, you have a Facebook group that you do your channeling in, is that true? Or do you just do it from your page? No, and I have the Global Wellness Energy. Mm. This one is public. And uh, this is where people can find all the meditations, transmissions to the heart of humanity. 
Beautiful. And uh, I have a private group, which is um, Grace and Transcended Heart. Mm. Okay. Well, we will for sure put that, uh, put those links out to Global Wellness Energy and um, so people can find you and get inspired as I have in the past. It is such a pleasure talking with you, Nicole, always. The same for me. Yeah. Maybe okay. we'll do that another time soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Once you get settled in the house. Or at least settled enough, right? We're never <laughs> yes <laughs> settled enough. I'm still unpacking boxes. It's been almost a year. <laughs> oh well, you know, this is this year was the year where I learned resilience. Mm. Actually, resilience became my middle name. <laughs> I love it. Nothing worked according to plan. <laughs> Nothing. So you have to turn around and just, okay, there is a new possibility. There's something else we can do. Let's adapt to that. And let's not resist because when we are in resistance, mm -hmm. we lose a lot of energy and we are not into our heart. <laughs> yep, that is true. So lots of practice for that this year for many of us over the last year, for sure. Yes. It. I love it. Well, thank you, Nicole. Midwest Elevation, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate you watching with us live and in the replay. If you have any other questions, comment in the live feed below or the replay below, and we will definitely get back to you. And I will get those links to Nicole down there in the comments as well. Have a beautiful Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye, everyone.